All right, good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to start work on the second video tutorial in my little OpenGL series. Now, this is going to be kind of based on the Nehi tutorials. I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, but basically our first tutorial was to open a window, and our second tutorial here is going to be our first polygon. So we're going to render both a triangle and a quad or square. So it's just two different rendering modes. Now, the Nehi tutorials use the fixed function pipeline, and we're going to be using the fully programmable pipeline. So we're going to differ quite a bit, but if you're curious about how the Nehi tutorials look, you can always go and check it out at nehi.gamedev.net. And we're going to do at least the first couple of these in order, so it should be fun. All right, so here I've created a project called OpenGL Tutorial 2, and it's the exact same code that was sitting in OpenGL Tutorial number 1. So you can go and grab that off my website, or you can do the first tutorial. It's up to you. And our first few steps are going to be to create a shader program because we're not using a fixed function pipeline. We need to tell the GPU how to manipulate vertices and then how to draw fragments or pixels to the screen. And then we're going to have to go and create some vertex buffer objects that attach to the inputs of our shader. So the vertex buffer objects will contain information like what vertices we want to render, what color we want to render them in, uh, what order to render them in, and so on and so forth. So let's start with the shaders. We can write a pretty simple one here. And let's start with the vertex shader. Now the vertex shader tells the GPU how to manipulate all the vertex data it receives. Uh, well, yeah, it, it runs once per vertex basically. So I'm going to have an input to the shader called the vertex position. So this is going to be some sort of vertex value that's coming in and now we have to manipulate it to transform it into screen space. To do that we need three matrices. The first is a projection matrix. The next is a view matrix. And the final one we need is the model matrix. All right, so the model matrix is what translates our vertices from their object space into a world space. So if we had, say, a crate that was modeled, so that was about the origin, so all of its positions are relative to zero, we might want to move it now in the world to something like 10x units out from origin. So we'd have some sort of translation matrix in here for 10x units. The view matrix contains all the information about the camera and where the camera position is. So as you move throughout the world, this is what manipulates that camera. And then the projection matrix is what introduces things like perspective, the near and far clipping planes, the aspect ratio of your computer screen, and so on and so forth. And now we'll quickly write the function here. And it's pretty simple. We're just going to set our uh, OpenGL position to the projection matrix, multiplied by the view matrix, multiplied by the model matrix, multiplied by a VEC4, which consists of the vertex position, and one. So because these are all four dimensional matrices, we need to multiply it by a VEC4. So we just introduce a one in W component. So our first thing is to translate it from the object space into world space, and then we'll apply the camera to it, and then finally any perspective. The next part we need for our shader is a fragment shader. And you can sort of think as a fragment shader is running once per pixel. That's not always the case. It, it depends on your setup, whether you're rendering to frame buffer object or texture or something like that. But that's this is the shader that actually does the drawing. So all that this guy is going to do is for each fragment he needs to draw, we're going to set that fragment to a color of white. So to do that, I'll set the RG B and A all to one. So we'll have a white and opaque color being applied. So that's all there is to it. We're going to go and take advantage of some of the classes that are built into the OpenGL library. And now here we're using something called a shader program. And our shader program is going to be equal to a new shader program that consists of that vertex shader and that fragment shader that we wrote before. Right, so we could run the code really quick and breakpoint here. And we can look to make sure that hey, there is no errors here in the program log. Uh, we've got three shader params. They're projection matrix, the view matrix, and the model matrix. So it looks like everything's working out okay. So we'll stop the program here. And now what we can do is we can start to set up that shader program for use. So let's go ahead and use that shader program and apply projection and view matrix to it. So I'm gonna set the projection matrix to a perspective matrix. And we're gonna use 0.45 as our field of view. That's pretty common. Our aspect ratio is simply the width divided by height. And our near clipping plane, I'll set it to 0.1F. 
and our far clipping plane I'll set to 1000 F. So those just dictate how close or far away an object is before it's no longer rendered. So if there's an object closer than 0.1, it won't be rendered. Same with if there's an object further away than 1000, it won't be rendered. It'll be beyond those clipping planes. And then finally, let's go and apply a camera. So we've got our view matrix here and we'll set its value and we'll use the look at function here in matrix four to construct a camera that is placed 10 Z units away from the origin. It's gonna be looking at the origin and its up direction is simply going to be vector3.up. Okay, so now what we have to do is we have to go and create our vertex arrays, the, the information that will actually be rendered to the screen. So to do that, I'm gonna use something called a vertex buffer object. Now I need two components. The first thing is I need a VBO that contains a bunch of vector trees, which are actual vertices. So I'll make one for my triangle and one for our square. And then the next that I need is a VBO that contains integers. And this lets OpenGL know which order to render those vertices in. So I'll call this my triangle elements and my square elements. All right, so let's start with the triangle because it's pretty easy. Triangle is gonna be equal to, let me spell that one, triangle, oh, sorry. I need static in there. Triangle is going to be equal to a new VBO that contains a bunch of vector threes. And we'll just supply an array of vector threes. All right, so the first vector is going to be the one at the point of the triangle, the top point. So I'll put that zero, one, and zero. So you can imagine it's at the origin and it's one high. So that's our top point. The next one is going to be at negative one, negative one, and zero. So you can imagine that's at negative one X, negative one Y, and that's our bottom left-hand corner. Finally, I'm going to introduce one at one, negative one, and zero. And that's all there is to it. So one would be one X, negative one Y, and that's gonna be our bottom right-hand corner. So those three points make up our triangle. Next, we'll do the square, which is pretty easy to conceptualize. It's gonna be a new vector three. And we'll put this one at negative one, one, and zero. So that's gonna be our top left corner. The next one's going to be at one, one, and zero. The next at negative one, sorry, one, negative one, and zero. And finally, we'll have one at negative one, negative one, and zero. So we'll have our top left corner, top right corner, bottom right corner, bottom left corner. So that's going to be our square. Now finally, we need to go and set up those elements. So my triangle elements is going to be a new VBO consisting of ints, and I'll just order them zero, one, and two. Now the key here is I have to remember to assign its buffer target to an element array buffer, because this is a different type of storage mechanism. This lets it know that this is an array that contains my vertex elements. So I'll go and do that, and then same with square elements. I'm gonna create a new VBO containing integers and zero, one, two, and three this time because we have three vertices. And once again, we'll set the buffer target to an element array buffer. All right, that's about it. Let's go ahead and add our on render frame here. So I'm going to go and use my program and then I'm going to draw my triangle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a bit of a translation to the model matrix so that we don't render the square and the triangle right on top of each other. So I'll go and set the model matrix. And I'm going to use matrix for create translation to build that translation matrix. And I'll put it at negative 1.5 F, let's say zero and zero. All right, now the next part is where it gets a little bit tricky. What we have to do is we have to tell OpenGL to assign this data here along with this element array to this vertex position here. So we're gonna only do this once and in the future we'll just use some of the built-in libraries that are in the OpenGL class libraries. But what we have to do is we have to go and enable that vertex attribute array. So to enable that vertex attribute array, we need to know what index that attribute array is at. So we're gonna to have to go and get some sort of vertex position index. And that's going to be equal to gl.getAttributeLocation and we'll use our program's program ID and the name of it, which is vertex position, to get that location. And we're gonna have to cast this to uint. So now we can go and enable that vertex attribute array, which is at the vertex position index. All right, the next thing we have to do is we actually have to bind our triangle's vertex buffer. So we can call gl.bindBuffer, and we can just pass it the triangle. 
no problem. The next thing is we have to actually um, set up the pointer that is going to go and move every time a vertex is drawn. So we'll use gl.vertex attribute pointer. And in here, we'll give it the index, which is this vertex position index. And we'll tell it that its size is our triangle dot size. The type is going to be our triangle dot pointer type, which in this case is float. We'll normalize the data. Now the stride is how many bytes are between adjacent vertices. So a vertex consists of three floats. Imagine the X, Y, and Z component are each floats, and each of those are four bytes. And so we can supply a number 12 here. It's also possible to use a marshal to dynamically query this size, but for this we'll just set it to 12. And since we're using a vertex buffer object, we can just set the in pointer to zero because we're starting with the zeroth element. All right, all that's left to do now is to bind our element array. So we'll go and bind the triangle elements and then finally draw it. So let's go and draw the elements and we're going to be drawing triangles. We're going to be drawing three of them. So we'll go and get that count from triangle elements. The type is going to be unsigned int, and that's the type that we're passing to our element array. And we're starting at element zero, zero with element, so let's pass that in there. And let's just render this to make sure it works. So you can see we've got a triangle showing up there. Now to draw our square, I'm going to use some of the built-in helper functions. So draw my square. So this will be a little bit easier. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to translate this a little bit in space. So I'm going to go and push this out to 1.500. Now instead of doing all this song and dance up here, I'm just going to go and say, I want to bind a buffer to shader attribute. So this is something that's built into the OpenGL class library. And I want to bind this time square to something called vertex position. And then I also want to bind my square elements. Now I put this in the wrong place. Let me just go and move this down. All right, now I'm going to draw my elements. And this time we're drawing quads because we want four vertices per surface that's being drawn or per object that's drawn. And just like before, we can go square elements count. Elements is unsigned int and our int pointer is going to be zero. All right, let's run that. And you can see that we now have a triangle and a square being drawn. So this lesson has gone over creating a very simple shader program. We're manipulating each vertex by the model matrix, the view matrix, and the projection matrix. And then each fragment is being drawn in this white color as defined here in the fragment shader. We've gone and constructed some vertex buffer objects. Uh, these guys contain the actual vertex information, which is the point in three-dimensional space that needs to be drawn. And then we've also created a vertex buffer object that contains our elements, which lets OpenGL know which order to draw the triangles in. Finally, we went and used OpenGL directly to go and get the attribute location, enable the vertex attribute array, bind the buffers, and so on. And then we used some of the built-in helper functions to make it a little bit easier to accomplish the same task. It was the next tutorial is going to be adding some color to those objects, so it should be a pretty quick one. Anyways, take care, have a great afternoon, and happy coding.